Hey, did you know I sell filters on Gumroad? Click the link in the description and follow the page to be updated whenever I share new projects. I also have a Patreon where you can contribute each month and help support the channel. Tier 3 gives you access to every new and existing Gumroad product without having to buy them all separately. Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you how you can use patches to adjust the opacity of any texture that's connected to an object in your scene. I originally got this idea from Catalyst, whose YouTube channel is almost at 10,000 subscribers and definitely worth checking out. He makes awesome tutorial content and I'll leave a link in the description so you can go subscribe. Watching his video gave me some ideas for tutorials I want to make in the future and inspired some of the filters that I'm currently working on. But I thought it might be worth explaining the concept here too, briefly, as a point of reference for myself and anyone else who might be scrolling through the channel looking for additional context. So that's what this is going to be, a brief overview of how opacity works, very similar to Catalyst tutorial which I also recommend you check out if you find this one confusing and scroll through his channel, check out some of the other videos he's made. I learned a lot from him in the last year and yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Okay, so here we are in a new project. First thing I'm going to do, switch to 2D mode and open up the patch editor. Drag it around until you're happy with the size, maybe make this a little bit bigger and we're good to go. Now I'm going to add an object to our scene. It's going to be a face tracker because we want to track the face and inside of that that we're going to add a face mesh. You could add a rectangle here or a plane or just about anything and I might even show you at the end what it looks like with those but for now we're going to be using a face mesh so add a material for that and rename it mesh just so that you've got some consistency going on. Change the shader type to flat and now we need a texture to import. I was using the rainbow pattern for the preview but I'll try something different this time so find one that you're happy with and drag it into your assets panel. Okay so I've imported this image you can see a preview of it down here. Hit this button for no compression it will bring up a small error message but don't don't worry about it too much. You can also come up here to the project tab, edit properties and under this compression menu you can increase the quality from 75% to 100% so that when you export to test on your device the image will look exactly the way it did when you imported it and there'll be no compression issues. So hit done when you've done that and now we can apply the texture to this mesh. So do that and you'll see it here appear on the face mesh. Now we're going to start creating the interactivity here in the patch editor. So the first thing we're going to do is take our image texture and drag it inside. That will create a patch out of it. So Similar to the camera texture when you drag that in it will have three outputs one for RGB A, one for RGB and one for just A which is the alpha channel. So what we're going to do is drag out from this RGB A channel we're going to add a swizzle. So a swizzle is used to control a specific value in your scene whether it's the X, Y, Z coordinate or in our case the RGB A values which we're going to be using ours for. So if you take this first one here and switch the X out for an RGB and then control C and control V to create a duplicate of that. Connect it up to the same output here and change it from RGB to A. So now we have one swizzle for our RGB value and one swizzle for our alpha value and they're both connected through the same RGBA output of our image texture. Now from the output of our alpha swizzle we're going to connect a multiply patch and from the output of the multiply patch we're going to connect a pack. Now this pack is by default set at vector 3 but we're going to switch that over to vector 2. We're going to take the output from our multiply which is currently in the top input of our pack and move it down to the second input and take the output from our RGB swizzle and connect it to the first input on our pack patch. Now we have this little loop going on. What we're going to do next is come back up to our mesh, hit this texture to create a patch and connect that up as the final output. So vector output here in the pack, connect that to the diffuse texture input and this is basically everything you need. As you can see though, there's no opacity change, nothing's happening just yet. So what we need to do now is create a loop animation that will connect to this second value of our multiply patch and trigger the animation to change from zero to one. So if we add a loop animation patch and we connect from this progress output to a transition, we change this transition from a vector three to a number and now if we connect the value output here to the second value input of our multiply patch now you can see the opacity is changing. I can check this mirrored option here so that it doesn't go from 0 to 1 and then immediately start from 0 again but rather goes from 0 to 1 and goes back down to 0 so we have a little bit of a looping animation here. We can change the duration from 1 second to 2.5 for example to slow things down a little bit and you can even adjust the value here so right now our start value is 0 which means completely invisible and our end value is 1 which is fully 100% opacity turned up to the max. You can adjust the opacity here and have it just be completely invisible or at 100%. You can even have it somewhere in the middle and it won't affect this loop of patches but I'll leave it at 100 for now. The reason we've had to set all this up by the way is because there's no ability like the texture thing here where you can create a patch for the opacity. So this is kind of a workaround for that. But as you can see we could change the start value from 0 to 0 0.25 and now it will go almost to fully invisible but not quite 
and then go back up to one. And you can change this value from one to 0 0.75. So now you've got a range somewhere in between zero and one, but not quite touching either end of it. So it gives you a lot of control to refine what the outcome of all of this will be. I'll just move this out of the way and make it a little bit tidier. And now you can see this is the final array of patches. We have our image texture here connected to two swizzles. The RGB A output is broken up. So we have our RGB in one swizzle and our alpha in the second one. We're connected to a multiply through our alpha channel and then both of them connect into a pack which goes into our diffuse texture. We also have a loop animation running here which creates the actual opacity effect and adjusts it from the start range to the end range. I'll put it back to zero and one just so that it's nice and clear. And if we want, we can also add a plane or a rectangle or something. So if I add a plane in here, then I can add a material for that. And if I make it the same thing, then you'll see when I make this invisible that it works just the same for a plane as it does for a face mesh. In fact, this works with any object that can have a material texture applied to it. So if I switch over to the FaceTime camera now, then you'll see, first of all, that I'm in bed and being lazy today. But second of all, that the plane is still working. It's going from zero to one, invisible to fully opaque on my face. And I can switch this back over so that it's the face mesh again, and I can get rid of the plane. And it's a pretty cool effect, I think. You can apply this to any 3D object, 2D object, any object in your scene, like I say, that can have a texture applied to it. So yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I do plan on making a few more tutorials in the future that use this technique, which is why I wanted to explain it here in a video. But I would recommend that you go check out Catalyst's YouTube channel. He has quite a lot of tutorials not just about Spark, but also Unity, After Effects, a lot of cool stuff going on over there. So links in the description for that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked the video. Share it wherever you think people might be interested in watching it. Subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Before you click off this video, I just wanted to let you know that I have merch now. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers. You may have noticed I updated my channel art. So I took that logo and put it on a bunch of stuff. If you're interested, it does help out the channel. So the links will be in the description. I want to put out a lot more content this year and your support really goes a long way. So thank you.